The Guardian is by far one of the most versatile professions in Guild Wars 2. You can do an insane amount of DPS with the Dragon Hunter Elite Specialization, but you can also play as a boon support or a healer with the Firebrand Elite Specialization. Even as a free to play player, there are a ton of opportunities to be extremely effective as a Guardian. Hey guys, it's me Kyo, and in this video I want to give you the best builds for the Guardian for open world PvE, end game PvE, PvP and world versus world. These videos take a ton of time to to create so if you want to support these types of videos make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and keep on watching till the end make sure to check the links in the comments to find the most up-to-date version of each build i discuss these might change a bit over time but have a prominent role in the meta for some years now let's start off with the best open world pve builds the first build i want to cover is a build that can be used by anyone so even for you free to play players out there. A good weapon set in open world PvE for the core guardian is a great sword combined with a scepter and a focus. As a guardian with a great sword you are able to pump out an enormous amount of damage with the symbol of wrath and the whirling blade combo. It has been one of the most powerful damaging combos in the game. The downside of this is that it only works from close range. Therefore we want to use the scepter and the focus as a second weapon set. With the scepter you can damage enemies from afar. But now the actual build. The Radiant Greatsword build allows you to do a good amount of damage in open world PvE. Next to the good damage that the build can do, it also offers decent survivability. The build suggests you take a sword in your second weapon set, but I prefer to use the scepter. This drops some mobility for ranged DPS. Using your Virtue of Justice combined with the Justice's Blind trade from the Radiant Straight Line, you can blind enemies around you. This makes sure you can deal a lot of damage to enemies whilst they cannot attack you. This damage is further amplified by the Virtue Straight Line. Most of the traits in this straight line amplify your damage whenever you activate a Virtue. In most cases, you want to benefit from the passive effects from these virtues. However, in this case, you want to use the Virtue of Justice, the first virtue, as much as possible because the traits amplify the damage. Make sure to time your Virtue of Courage, your third virtue. This virtue gives you the Aegis buff, which blocks the next incoming attack. The inspiring virtue trait allows you to do more damage whenever you have an Aegis. The virtue of courage passively grants you this Aegis, but is removed when you get hit. Make sure to activate the virtue of courage when you don't have an Aegis to significantly increase your damage. If you want to fight big groups in fast succession, or you need to recharge your virtues mid-fight, make sure to use your elite skill, Renewed Focus. After a short casting time, all of your virtues will recharge. While casting, you also become invulnerable. This makes sure you won't take damage if enemies hit you. Before using, make sure you have used all your virtues. This allows you to get the maximum value of the usage of Renewed Focus. This build can adapt to almost every situation in open world PvE, whether you are doing your personal story or just doing events. It is a very beginner friendly build as well, so make sure to give this one a try. The next build I want to discuss is a Dragon Hunter build. For this build, the expansions are required. Although the Dragon Hunter Elite Specialization allows you to wield a bow, I suggest to not use it for this build. You can use a bow if you want to damage from afar, but once again I suggest to take your Greatsword and the Scepter Focus combination. But really, you can take anything you want as a second weapon set. Just make sure you have your Greatsword equipped at all times. The playstyle of this Dragon Hunter build is similar to the first build I have discussed. But since we are playing a Dragon Hunter, our virtues have changed as well. Your first virtue will will now be the Spear of Justice. This is what you want to use as much as possible. When you attach an enemy to your Spear of Justice, your damage against that enemy will significantly increase. This does not come from the skill itself, but it comes from the big game hunter trait in the Dragon Hunter trait line. So before you start attacking, make sure you have attached your Spear to an enemy. But the Spear has a fairly long cooldown. But luckily with the renewed Justice trait from the Radiant straight line, your Spear of Justice will be renewed whenever you kill an enemy. Because we are still running Justice is Blind, the Spear of Justice will still blind enemies around you. If possible, try to attach your spear as fast as possible and then kill the enemy right away. But next to this awesome greatsword combo, the Dragon Hunter also offers a good amount of crowd control. Your elite, Dragon's Maw, traps enemies and pulls them together. So whenever you are fighting a big group of enemies, 
Use this trap, it does a good amount of damage and gives you some room to breathe whenever you are in a dire situation. For the other skills, you can basically take anything you like, just don't remove Bane Signet. This will drastically lower your damage when you remove it from your bar. Now for our next build, let's have a look at the Firebrand Elite Specialization. The Firebrand Elite Specialization changes your virtues once more. And once again, we want to use these virtues as much as possible. There are Firebrand builds out there that you can use with a greatsword and a scepter focus combination. But let's have a look at another approach, a more condition-based approach to the Guardian. The Firebrand unlocks a ton of new opportunities for the Guardian. One of these opportunities is the ability to deal condition-based damage to your enemies. The build is extremely strong in providing yourself with a lot of boons. This allows you to survive and do good damage. Your main source of damage for this build is your Tome of Justice, your first virtue. This gives you access to 5 new temporary skills which you can use for a limited amount of uses. You want to spam skill 1, 2 and 4 when you are using the Tome of Justice. This is where most of your damage comes from. Also, try to kill an enemy as fast as possible. When you kill an enemy, it refreshes your first virtue, the Tome of Justice. Which means that you can keep spamming these powerful skills whenever you kill an enemy. In between the use of the Tome of Justice, you can use your axe to deal damage to your enemies and pull them together. And also don't forget to use your scepter and torch for ranged AoE damage. Interesting skills on your bar are the Mantra of Solace and the Mantra of Potence. These two skills have a rather long cast time, but after that initial cast time, you get a number of instant usable charges that grant you quickness. This allows you to deal damage and cast skills in rapid succession. If you are using these mantras, make sure to never use your last charge. The charges you used will recharge quicker than the cooldown of your mantra. If you use your last charge, you have to wait between 20 to 30 seconds to cast your mantras again. And this while your charges recharge within 12 seconds. In the video, you should see what I mean. The buffs of these mantras also affect nearby allies. So this is great to use when you are playing with other people. The only downside, if you could call it that, is that it uses different gear than the Berserker or Power gear that almost everyone uses. Instead, the build suggests to run a mix of Griefers and Viper stats. These could be hard and pricey to obtain for newer players. But since we are only using the build in open world right now, I suggest to go with Dire, Rabbit or Carrion gear. This can easily be crafted or bought from the trading post without spending a lot of money. I think this build is a fun and effective alternative from all the power greatsword builds that most of the guardians are using. Alright, that wraps up my favorite open world PvE builds, let's move on to the endgame builds for the guardian. The first one is my favorite, and I think you can use this build in open world PvE as well. The build I'm talking about is the Power Dragon Hunter build. This build is so strong that it benchmarks as one of the highest DPS builds in the game. Remember the mechanic we discussed before? The Spear of Justice that increases your damage whenever you attach it to an enemy? Yes, that mechanic applies to this raid build as well. The build's rotation is fairly easy to understand, but can be quite hard to master. You want to start off with a few scepter skills, lay down a trap, attach your spear, and then swap to your greatsword. While you are using your greatsword, prioritize on using the symbol of wrath and the whirling blade. This does a tremendous amount of damage to your average raid or fractal boss. I would recommend this build to everyone who's just started playing raids or fractals. The build is easy to understand and it does a lot of damage. The only downside of this build is that it is not very effective against bosses that move around a lot. Take for example the Solus Horror in Wing 5 or the Twin Largos in Wing 6. To get the maximum damage out of your skills, it requires the boss to stay in one position. For most raid bosses, this is the case, but for some, this does not apply. To be effective with this build, you need to use Berserker gear, which is relatively easy to get, so make sure to give this build a shot. For now, let's continue with the Quickness Firebrand, commonly referred to as QFB. It is a DPS role for the Guardian, which provides your group with quickness. You do this with just three skills, the Mantra of Solace, the Mantra of Potence and Feel My Wrath. Quickness is very important in endgame content. It makes sure your team can cast and attack much faster, and this is incredibly useful for some mechanics or raid timers. Also, killing your enemies faster lowers the pressure on your healers and support. I already explained in the open world section of this video that these mantras have a long initial casting time, but after you have charged your mantra, you get three instant charges which heal and give you and your allies quickness. I can't stress this enough, but make sure to not use your final charge of these mantras. The cast time and recharge time of these mantras is long. Waiting for your charges to 
to return is much quicker. You want to keep using these charges as much as possible. Also, keep in mind that you need the Liberator's Vow trait to make this work. Liberator's Vow applies quickness to you and your allies whenever you use a heal skill. In this case, this is the Mantra of Solace. You can further extend the quickness you apply to yourself and your group by using tomes. Your Swift Scholar trait makes sure that you receive the quickness whenever you use your tomes. Keep in mind that this has a short cooldown. So, opening all the tomes at once does not grant you a ton of quickness. You want to leave a few seconds in between. The build has a few variants. You can use the Greatsword variant that we discussed before, or you can use a condition-based build with an axe. You can use the condition-based quickness build if you want to spice things up a little bit or fight bosses that move around a lot. And you can use the familiar Greatsword variant if you are fighting stationary bosses. If you are playing the Greatsword variant, you don't even have to switch gear in order to be effective with this build. You can be very effective with Berserker gear if you have practiced your rotation. If you have trouble keeping this up, you can always use concentration gear to extend your boon duration. But I highly encourage you to try it with Berserker gear first. The last endgame PvE build I would like to discuss is the Healing Firebrand. This build proves that the Guardian is really a jack of all trades. Next to damage and support, it can also be an effective healer. Like the Quickness Firebrand, the Healing Firebrand also applies a ton of boons. But instead of doing damage, the Healing Firebrand heals. The Healing Firebrand can be found in most team compositions, but rarely in a solo healing position. Your healing is decent, but it's not as strong as a Druid's healing. You have two roles healing and providing boons. In terms of rotation, there isn't any. Basically, most of your traits and your skills apply healing to you and your allies. Take for example Battle Presence, the final trait from the Virtue trait line. This applies the passive effect of your second virtue, a small health regeneration, to all of your allies. Also, all of your honor traits add healing to many actions you do. Dodging, yeah, that heals. Using a symbol, that heals too. Block an attack that triggers your Aegis, that heals too. Also, the Bow of Truth deals damage and heals your allies as well. For your weapons, you have an axe and a shield. Your second weapon set, it's a staff that can be used to heal and support your allies. Why these weapons? You have a number of healing skills and protective skills on both of these weapons. Also, these weapons can spawn symbols which heal your allies because of the Writh of Persistence trait from the Honor trait line. For your armor, stats and weapons, you use Harrier's gear. This gives you the extra healing power and concentration which improves your boon duration. The build claims that you can drop your boon duration with about 70% and still keep up quickness and healing. So you can even swap out some Harrier parts if you want. So that were the best Guardian builds for endgame PvE. Let's have a look at great World vs World builds for the Guardian. The Guardian always had a prominent role in World vs World. Many commanders run a Guardian to stay alive in bigger fights because their builds have a lot of sustain and great support abilities. The first build was common between 2012 and 2015, but it is still very relevant for free-to-play players. The build uses a staff and a scepter focus weapon set. As with many of builds before and to come, this build heavily relies on your symbols that do damage for you. Traits like Symbolic Power and Symbolic Avenger further enhance the damage you do with your symbols. The reason you have two ranged weapons is because you are dipping in and out of melee range. The symbols that last on the floor can either damage enemies or heal and support your allies. Next to that, the line of warding, staff skill 5, can prevent players from passing a line or prevent them from running away. You can easily split a blob in two if you don't have enough stability. You can also buff and support your allies with the empower skill. Although the buff is minor, it still helps and gives your allies 12 might for a brief period. Wall of Reflection blocks incoming projectiles, stand your ground prevents you and your group from getting knocked away. Stay on your commander as much as possible. Make sure to use Empower before a fight and make sure you have stability before you engage as well. When you are in a blob, make sure to drop your symbols and spam skill 1 on your staff. This way you can damage multiple enemies with little effort. Spam your virtues when in danger and use Renewed Focus to become invulnerable for a brief period and renew your virtues. The armor you use for this build has Marauder stats. This is an uncommon stat combination and I would advise you to use this armor set only if you play a lot of World vs World. Before crafting or buying armor, try the build with Berserker stats or any other set you are comfortable with. This works just fine. Make sure to check this build out when you are a free to play player and want to get into World vs World. 
If you have the expansions, make sure to try out the enhanced version of the last build. By using the Firebrand Elite Specialization, you get a ton of support and survival abilities. This build excels in providing stability to your allies. With stability, you prevent your allies from getting picked out of a blob. For this build, you trade in your scepter for an axe. The axe can cripple enemies and pull them towards you. This is ideal if you want to remove stability stacks from your enemies. Also, the symbol of vengeance can slow down your enemies with the cripple condition. By using your tomes, you can quickly adapt to the situation. If you are playing offensively, use your first tome to pull enemies together and slightly damage them. Use your second tome to heal your allies. And use your third tome to grant them boons and block projectiles. Since you are a support, make sure to prioritize your second and third tome. You have a support role after all. Make sure to use these tomes as much as possible. Because of the stalwart scholar and stalwart speed trait, you will provide quickness to yourself and allies. This will make sure you and your allies can keep casting in rapid succession in the midst of battle. You will keep your passive effects from these tomes after you use them because you are using the lore master trait. This has synergy with the battle presence trait. This will make sure that you and your allies have passive healing at all times. Your mantras further enhances healing and stability. You really don't have an excuse if you get knocked down with this build. The amount of stability and healing it provides is insane. Also, the build uses giver stats. This is necessary to provide the right amount of healing to your allies. Of course, there are moments that you don't want to play as a support. And this is where the Dragon Hunter Power DPS build comes in. This roaming build is ideal for players that like to play world versus world on their own or in smaller groups. Using a sword and a shield, along with the bow, the Dragon Hunter has the ability to damage up close and from a distance. Also, with the sword you are able to block projectiles, blind enemies and teleport to them. Three things that are very useful if you are playing against other players. Next to the sword, you also have the judge's intervention skill to teleport to another player or enemy. But it can also be used if you are run into trouble. For example, you are fighting another player but you are about to lose. Turn around and use a symbol of blades on your sword or the judge's intervention to jump to an enemy NPC. This creates distance between you and your enemy which allows you to run away. You can then use the Wings of Resolve, which is buffed by the Absolute Resolution trait, to remove more conditions from you and your allies. This also enhances the passive healing you provide to your allies. You will also smite conditions whenever you use a healing skill. This is made possible by the Lesser Smite Condition trait. Enough possibilities to remove conditions, I'd say. Your traps are also pretty strong. You can lure enemies or NPCs into them and blind them and do a good amount of damage to them as well. This works especially well if you are trying to capture a camp on your own. Don't be too obvious when you are trying to lure other players in. They might know what you're up to. You can then keep enemies at bay with your bow, which has skills that can knock back and cripple enemies. This build also uses Marauder stats. This makes sure you do a good amount of damage while you also have some extra vitality so you don't get one-shotted. Personally, I think this build is good in smaller groups, but it also works well if you are on a solo adventure. If you plan to participate in bigger zergs, try out the other two builds I described before. Alright, that's World vs World. Let me know if you have an awesome build you'd like to share. For the last section of this video, let's talk about PvP. The first build is both playable for free-to-play players and players that have bought the expansion. The build heavily focuses on using as many symbols as possible. With these symbols you can support allies and damage enemies at the same time. The build is not great for soloing or in 1 vs 1 fights. Instead, it excels when you are trying to capture or hold a point. For this build, you will use a mace and a shield as your first weapon set. For your second weapon set, you use a scepter and a focus. These weapon sets can both place symbols on the ground, which you can support your allies with. On your mace you have a symbol of faith, and on your scepter you have the symbol of punishment. With your shield you can push players off a point and support your allies. Shield of Absorption is a great skill to do that with. You push players away, heal allies and block incoming projectiles, a really strong skill to hold a point with. You can further support your allies with the save yourself skill. You transfer conditions from allies and you can then turn them into boons with the contemplation of purity. Or you can damage enemies with your smite condition skill. Your traits further enhance your healing and support. Many actions, like dodging, apply healing to your allies. Have a good look at your traits before you start a match. Also, before you use renewed focus, make sure to use all your virtues. You will become invulnerable for a few seconds and have them all recharge after using the skill. Keep in mind that when you become invulnerable, you won't capture or decapture a point. 
So whenever you are up against another enemy on a point and you become invulnerable, they are able to capture that point for the duration you are invulnerable for. Personally, I like the build. It's a good support option and allows you to survive and keep your point. In terms of damage and mobility, it lacks a little bit, but you have a bunker role with this build. This means that you should capture and keep points, not kill players. This build also has a Firebrand variant. We exchange our mace for an axe and swap out our smite condition skill for a mantra. The playstyle of this Firebrand build is similar to the Bunker Guardian we just covered. However, there are a few things different about this build. The Firebrand trait, unrelenting criticism, dazes your foes whenever you use your symbol of vengeance. This X skill has quite a big range, so you can basically daze and interrupt every enemy that is on a point. This is not the only crowd control you have with this build. For example, using the Tome of Justice allows you to use Heated Rebuke. This pulls enemies together in a smaller area. And last but not least, we have Blazing Edge. X skill 3. These three skills can be used in rapid succession and it allows you to shut down enemies real fast. You can basically pull and drag them all over a point. Your mantra of truth is used to apply conditions to enemies. In contrast to the firebrand build we just discussed in the endgame PvE section, you want to use all your charges. The weighty term straight makes sure that the last charge of your mantra applies immobilize. This can be used to catch fleeing enemies or prevent them from reaching a point. The trait also makes sure that the cooldown of your mantras are lowered. The same goes for your healing mantra, Mantra of Solace. Use all of your charges to gain another Aegis, receive more healing and immobilize enemies. Aegis is important since it heals you whenever it triggers. This is because of the pure of heart trait in the honor trait line. And last, make sure to use your tomes as much as possible. The passive effect remains whenever you use them due to the lore master firebrand trait and they will also apply quickness to you and your allies. You can easily renew these tomes with the renewed focus elite skill. The last build I want to cover in this video is a Dragon Hunter build. We mostly discuss support and capture builds for the Guardian, but the Guardian is also a great damage profession. This condition based build is able to burst down enemies rather quick. This is because of the huge amount of burning the build can apply. For your weapons, you use a sword and a shield for your first weapon set. The second weapon set consists out of a scepter and a focus. The main difference with this build is that it uses a sword. The sword does a good amount of damage and it it allows you to teleport to your enemies. And next to that you can damage your enemies while simultaneously blocking incoming projectiles. Before you engage an enemy, try to attach the Spear of Justice to them. This makes sure you give them a ton of burning. While you are fighting them, make sure to use your spirit weapons as well. This applies burning to your enemies due to the Eternal Armory trait. And it also gives you another charge on the spirit weapons as well. This also works great whenever it's dangerous on point and you want to make some room or put some pressure on the point. Just aim your spirit weapon on the point. Another big difference here are the traps. The traps are used to heal yourself, but also to put a ton of pressure on your enemies. The Dragon's Maw Elite Skill and the Procession of Blades trap can pull enemies together and then deal a ton of damage to them. And if you are into trouble and you have a lot of enemies around you, use the Signet of Retribution. This applies a ton of retaliation to you and your allies and it burns nearby enemies. As stated before, the build is focused on dealing condition-based damage, so this applies a good amount of pressure to your enemies. There, these were my favorite Guardian builds in Guild Wars 2. Did I miss anything? Do you have a question? Or you have a build you'd like to share? Please let me know in the comments. You know how to support me by now, so help me out if you can. For now, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace!